Do 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 do. Happy Annabelle trade deadline day, everybody. That's Matthew Hamilton. I'm Kay Adams. That's a lot of candy. Did I ask all of my producers to, to bring in with their kids? Wouldn't miss. I certainly did, and here yeah. it is at our breakfast table. Uh, am I doing this to self-soothe after the Bengals lost Hamilton, or am I doing it to lure in a 6'4 wide receiver? Can it be both? <laughs> let's do it. I almost said let's try. It's here. Trade deadline day. Teams have until 4 p.m. Eastern today, this afternoon, to make a move to try to gear up for a stretch run to take some chances and secure depth on their rosters. Now, we've already seen a couple big moves go down, including Roquan Smith to the Ravens. That happened yesterday. I don't love it. We'll get into it. I understand it, of course. And the Ra I love it for the Ravens side. Are you going to draft that well? Are you going to draft that well to make up for a piece that Roquan was uh, in that on that defense? And it's just a brace yourself moment for Chicago. Brace yourself. The loss last week was brutal. It's a double digit losses the entire season now as they retool and rebuild. Hate to see him go, but obviously they're trying to figure it out, and they also don't want to maybe mess with a player who's made it clear, and we saw what he looked like after Robert Quinn was traded and dealt, that he does not want to be there in Chicago through said rebuild. So good luck to Poles and company. I wasn't super happy to see that. We've also heard names like Alvin Kamara mentioned, and he's tweeting the Michael Jackson eating popcorn gift. Then you have Jerry Judy, uh, an athletic, talented wide receiver who I don't believe has ever shown us his full potential. Where can he go? And uh, then, you know, there is the question to bring it back to the Bears. Do the Bears keep selling? Is there a bigger seller or bigger buyer on the market for some of these pieces to make some moves here and try to make some changes to what's been a really wonky season so far? And that's depicted, of course, by last night's action. We're going to start with this. Miles Garrett. And now, Hamilton, you have to explain this to me. <laughs> That's what is this? That's Vecna. He's kind of, um, you know, he's a Stranger Things character. He's kind of the puppet master of the Upside Down. He enjoys torturing children. I feel like he would be right up your alley. I feel like you'd love him. <laughs> You're such a jerk. <laughs> oh, Mark Boto laughing. Oh, that's really fun. Um, why, why is he doing this? Was the Grim Reaper thing with him a Halloween thing? I it think wasn't. So. It wasn't? I, I don't think it I was. I can't remember. But he, he also decorated his entire house to look like Vecna's house. He had like different quarterbacks scattered around his yards. It was pretty disturbing. Does Vecna kill the children? Is that what happens? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, but where's the Winona Ryder in it all? That's what I would watch. I for. mean, she's she's in there battling him. And, you Vecna. Know. Yeah. There so are... he was pretty Vecna y yeah, last night. Yeah, he definitely was. Oh my gosh. Uh, I was insane. So let's talk about what went on in this game. It's very uh, disconcerting because. I, I, it, the upside down is where they go. That's where Joe yeah. Burrow went. That's where this entire offense, this offensive line, this Jamar Chaseless situation with the Bengals were. He had himself, Vecna, a sack and a half, four quarterback hits, everybody. And he, he also tipped a pass, and it results in an interception that destroys a promising opening drive for said Cincinnati Bengals. So Joey B, they would never got it going. No. I was waiting the entire time. And I feel like that opening drive kind of set the tone for the whole thing. Because once Miles Garrett gets his hand on that ball and it's intercepted, they the next couple of drives, I think it was like three or four drives, just completely stalled after that. Yeah. I, the Bengals were definitely scoring on that drive. It was a, a field goal at minimum. It was a first down play where Garrett gets his hand up and tips that ball. And then after that, the air just got completely sucked out of that Bengals offense. So if I wasn't watching this game, these are the texts that I would send you. Sometimes if I don't catch a game, I'm like, and I'm looking at the score and I'm seeing, I, I go, I, with this game in particular, I would say, Zach Taylor play calling. He doesn't have Jamar Chase there, and so he's like, Zach Taylor is failing me, and the offensive line is terrible. Are either of those things true, or is it something bigger? I think the biggest thing was the offensive line issues last night. You saw they, they just couldn't handle Miles Garrett. They couldn't, and, and the rest of that Browns front started to get home as well. I think that was the biggest issue, and I think the Jamar Chase thing definitely plays into that as well, um, especially with the offensive line struggling. The trust level that Burrow has with Chase, the ability to get the ball out of his hand quickly, anticipate those passes, just get rid of, get the ball out, and he knows that Jamar Chase is going to get to the spot and make a play on it. Right. Not having that guy that he has that much trust with 
definitely heard him last night. Well, I had some trust with the you know NFL fans out there watching, and then I go on my show last week and I put up my helmet and I say, "This is the team. I like how they looked." And a lot of people said it was against the Falcons. Shut up! Like every, and then you're looking at this game and it's you know this 32-13 situation coming up next. They've got the Panthers and they've got the Steelers. Where do I go from here with this team that's going to be without Jamar at least the next few? Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, I think it's going to be, there are going to be some ups and downs without Chase. I think we saw it last night, how big of an impact he has. Again, while the offensive line, it, there's really no fix for that. Having Chase, they found ways to mitigate some of those offensive line issues because of Chase and because of Burrow's ability to get the ball out. Yeah. I know a lot of people are, are upset they didn't, a lot of Bengals fans are upset they didn't run the ball enough. But I think they kind of offset that with some of these short short passes to Joe Mixon, some of the screen passes that they mixed in. They weren't running the ball because they haven't been able to run the ball effectively. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when they did try to run the ball last night, it didn't go well. Their longest run was seven yards. I don't know if it'll be easier so. against the Panthers, especially in that defense. They got to figure it it's out. Not. I want, do want to give love here. You know, uh, Brown's team, how do I put this? Not easy to root for for me in 2022. I like things nice and easy to root for, but I do want to give a guy who I've always had an easy time cheering on, Jacoby Brissett, some credit here because he barely missed all night against this banged up uh, Bengal secondary. He led three second half touchdown drives against a defense, I'm over here, hi, um, that hadn't allowed a, a single one all season, right? He has been playing well. Then you look at his teammates. His teammates, clear when he was on the Colts, he was out there cheering with the defense yeah. when they would score a touchdown. This team rallies around him. You know, he was up there in New England as well. We, we know this this character in the league. To say that you took the Bengals to town on a Monday Night Football is huge. And the Browns are, you know, a missed extra point and a missed field goal away from being in a playoff spot. Everybody, and to me, it just sucks. And I wish you didn't have to give up a spot in less than a month. In fact, I wish. Jacoby Brissett could be the starter for this team the whole way through. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, with the way that they've played with him at quarterback, as you said, they're just a couple plays away from being 5-3 and three in playoff position. Yeah. He hasn't been perfect, but he's given them chances to win every single game that he's played and, and every time he's been out there. And as he said, there's a chemistry there with him. You saw it last night. This team really does rally around him. Yeah, we're going to have Darius Butler joining the show. As always, look at you, the mayor of Shutdown City. We also, I think DK Metcalf's going to pop on. That's I huge. hope so. I know. I'm so excited to talk to him. He's like my favorite. So DK Metcalf might hang out. Uh, but we have other takeaways ahead of the trade deadline at four tonight. Uh, and let's start with the Saints, right? Uh, and, and here's a, a plea, I guess, if we can get this camera right here. That would be wonderful. And I really appreciate it as we do a, a little around the league here. I'm thinking of it like this. You have a couple of hours, Nikki Loomis. I don't know you personally. I'm a fan of your team. I'm a fan of your coach. And I'm asking you personally, don't do it. Because I've heard the rumors swirling over the past week. I've heard Camara to the Eagles. I've heard Camara to the Rams. Camara to the Underworld. What is it called? The Upside, <laughs> the upside Down. down. Yeah. Ooh, Camara to the Bills. Uh, all over the place. Sunday's 24 to nothing win over the Raiders should stop that in its tracks. And it should serve as a reminder of how much Alvin Kamara means to that football team, how he's the centerpiece of it all. His former head coach, Super Bowl winning Sean Payton, says it. Mark Ingram comes on our show and says he's the focal point. He is the team. So on the day, on this game last week, he put up 62 on the ground, 96 through the air, and three total touchdowns. He's continuing to do things no one has ever done. And despite all of the injuries... You've suffered as a team this season. If you look at the NFC South standings, you are still right there, Saints team. Mickey Loomis, do not do this. Do not give up on Kamara and do not give up on this season as a team. That's what that move does. It's, well, we're rebuilding, we're rethinking things, whatever. Don't do it. You are very much in it. Uh, and I want to see it happen. Now, let's talk Cardinals, Vikings here. And let's listen. I haven't seen this yet. Patrick Peterson, show me this. I don't care what nobody say. 12 years in, I'm still a bad man. I am a bad man. Oh! My goodness. So I watched the game, and it was, what, like three pass breakups with Kyler Murray, and he had a great game. What do you make of this whole thing? Because the Vikings yeah. are not talked about for some crazy reason. Yeah, and I think with Peterson, this game was definitely personal, playing against Cardinals. his former team. 
Um, but yeah, the Vikings, it is funny that they're, they're six and one, but it does seem like they've kind of flown under the radar at six and one. I think there's still that hesitation to buy into Kirk Cousins, but he's been he's been playing really well. Um, Do you have hesitation buying into Kirk Cousins? No, I think the way that he's playing this year and with Kevin O'Connell and the different wrinkles they're throwing in offensively, I really like it. And I think the defense is at a point now where I can really get on board. I think last year, because Cousins isn't good enough to carry a team when the defense and the other pieces aren't right around him. But with the way their defense is playing, especially the addition of Zadarius Smith, we haven't really talked about that Why does no one much, talk like, about how Zadarius Smith is crushing it for the Vikings right now? Yeah, he's leading the league in sacks. He had three sacks on Sunday. And, like, they all came in huge moments, too. They were all, like, complete drive-killing sacks. And he's transformed this defense completely. The pa- and it was, it was a cool thing for the Vikings because not only do you get this guy that totally transforms your pass rush, but you get to steal him away from the Packers as well. And so kind of a double, yeah. double-edged double sword there. And then the Kirk is, like, running, too. Like, what are we, don't we have this crazy run? Oh, yeah, we got to check this Let's out. Let's see this. This is, you know, and he's, they're on a run as a team, of course. They're there, you know, sitting pretty uh, at 6-1 and one with this start that's flying under the radar. But, I mean, this is the most impressive run we've seen from a number 8 wearing purple all season. Sorry, Lamar Jackson. <laughs> It's just, I, I don't think I've ever seen him move like that at any point in his career. Like, he looked athletic. He looked fast. He, he looked awesome. Uh, they take on the Bills in two weeks. That's going to be fun. I'm excited for that one. Uh, me too. Okay, Titans. Let's hit this one really quick before we go to the break. Uh, 17-10 win over the Texans. We didn't get to talk about this because we had Victor Cruz on. And Victor Cruz, like, we love you, but we, <laughs> we, <laughs> we have things to, to talk about. We have things to talk about. We didn't get, to get into any of this. But Derrick Henry uh, casually racked up 219 rushing yards mm-hmm. and two touchdowns. Normalized behavior, which I don't like to see not get celebrated. It's the fourth yeah. time he's put up 200-plus with multiple scores against the Texans in his career. <laughs> that's that's ridiculous, so ridiculous even for him. Uh, it was also the first start and win, though, for Titans rookie Malik Willis, who was starting in place of the injured Ryan Tannehill. Your thought on this, because he wasn't asked to do a ton. He was 6 of 10, 55 yards. There was an interception, but he did enough to get the team to 5-2. and two, And you and I were big on Malik Willis going into the draft. Yeah, because you saw the talent level. You saw the athleticism, the arm strength, arm strength, all the special things he could do. But we saw this preseason the growth that he, you know, the steps that he's going to have to take to be a good NFL starting quarterback. And I think what we saw, you know, we saw Vrabel really get after him in the preseason. He was yelling at him when he wasn't making the reads he was supposed to make. He actually pulled him out of the game after like a 30 yard run. Do we like that? Because he didn't, I didn't love it. I know. Again, there are lessons there. Like, yes, he didn't make the read he was supposed to make in the passing game. He didn't make the throw he was supposed to make. But he still made a fantastic play. There's a way to teach the lesson, I think, without benching him. Yeah. And I think the Malik Willis we saw on Sunday, there were a couple times he looked afraid to pull the trigger, afraid to make some of the throws that were there, or even just run when the throws weren't there. I feel like there was one play, especially it was the second and three, and there's a lane for him to run, and he doesn't pull the ball down. He just th- tosses it out of bounds because I think Vrabel's in the back of his mind. Like, I'm going to get yelled at if I, if I take off here. And- do you think they're contenders? Uh, who are you? Who do you have more faith in, Titans or Vikings? Vikings, I think. Yeah. I still. I know, think I have more faith in, this, in the Seahawks than both of them. I'm obsessed yeah. with the Seahawks. Yeah, they've been fine. And we should have DK on, and we should talk about it because they're the a top five ranked offense right now, and the the only question is, can you fend off the Niners, right? Yeah. That's really the only question there for him. But we're gonna. Well, that's not the only question we have for him. We have, <laughs> I got to talk about the poop mobile. Have to. I got to talk about. Clench Walk 2020. <laughs> we have to talk about Gino and whether or not it's legit, which everyone we're talking to, even former teammates like Derwin James going up against him, have talked about how great Gino is. Can that sustain? Uh, and are they going to be a playoff team? That's really the Seahawks question. Yeah, no, it really is. And I think I think they've got a good shot. I, I don't think this is an anomaly from Gino. I think we're going to see this. I'm trying uh, to see. <laughs> carrying forward throughout the season. And it is funny, you're right. Everybody we talk to around the league, Seems to be celebrating what Gino's doing right now. Even all these guys on other teams, they they love Gino. Players love him. I love DK if he comes on the show. I don't know. I haven't heard. <laughs> I haven't heard from him, but listen, booking your own situation is not a, it's a, it's not for the lighthearted, but we're going to have fun here. Or we'll just get sugar high and, and see how much candy I can eat before I throw up all next after this as we welcome in Darius Butler, who I'm sure dressed as some F1 thing. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> did you dress up as Lewis not Hamilton, today. Darius? Did you? I did Smile. not. No. You're run up in Adam's camera. <laughs> Move, 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 move
Somebody say when I'm in a room, 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 room. Somebody stop me, I'm on a throne. Yeah, yeah. Move, stop me, I got a job and I got a choose, choose. Move, 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 move. Move. Back on Up and Adams, DK Metcalf joining us shortly, but we are on a mission here as a show, as an Up and Adams family, to keep Darius Butler in football. He was a cornerback for the Colts, Panthers, Patriots, uh, and he does the man-to-man -man podcast, but we are losing this man to F1, and not on my watch. Man, now it was a good weekend for that, uh, for that goal, because uh, it was a boring weekend for F1 out in Mexico. Uh, not much drama there on the track. So I'm here. I'm still here. I'm still here in the NFL, baby, for the you know, professional American football league, as some may call it. We love to hear it. Now, Darius, <laughs> you, what what candy was given out at the Butler household? Ah oh, man, Twix, Snickers, the Reese's Cups. I'm a full size oh. candy bar type guy. You know, put it out there, turn the lights on. When we're out, we're out. Lights go off, and that's it. But um, it was a Nah, it wasn't too crazy outside last night. We had a couple of visitors, but it, it was cool. It was cool. We love it. All right, let's talk about some NFL here because the showdown for the yeah. NFC South brought all the drama. We had DJ Moore, 62-yard touchdown. There's 23 seconds to go in this one in the fourth quarter, and then he gets the unsportsmanlike penalty and it pushes the extra point yeah. back, blah, blah, blah. We know what happens. The Panthers missed it, which would have won them the game. Uh... So as I felt like, if you're the teammate, right? If you're DJ's teammate, what are you saying to him after the game? Uh, maybe, maybe a little look, but it's not much to say at that point. You know, he was obviously excited <laughs> for uh, making a, a huge, huge play. And that throw, I mean, the catch was great, but that throw from P.J. Walker was unbelievable. Easily probably the best throw um, I've seen this season. Uh, but he was obviously overcome with excitement, took his helmet off, and uh, we all know his players. That's kind of the card one of the cardinal sins on the field. Can't take your helmet off during the celebration. Panero missed, and then he missed another yeah. one after that. So um, that's a conversation that the coach has to have with DJ Moore uh, as a player, as a teammate. I don't think I'm saying much to him after the game because I know he's sick. Patrick Mahomes said it was the throw of the year. Now you're looking in down yeah. the barrel of the camera. I'm DJ Moore. I need. What's the look? What's the look? You said you give him a look. That's it right there. Just a quick, just a quick side eye, quick wow. face, look of disappointment, and then you just keep it moving. But uh, you know, it all comes <laughs> that you, you, you all, as a player, you think about all the plays that you could have made in that game uh, to make a difference. Uh, but the Panthers, man, DJ Moore obviously made an incredible play once again. PJ Walker with that throw, but that's a tough, tough loss, tough way to lose a game like that, especially with everything that's going on in uh, Carolina right now. Yeah, well, trade deadline, too, is happening. So let's say we could yep. move DJ Moore to any team. Where do you think he would land, should land, and where would you want him to go? I mean, the Packers. The Packers need a, a, tight fly, a top flight receiver probably more than anybody right now. You need a weapon like that uh, for Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, they're struggling. Four losses in a row now, uh, coming off another ugly Sunday night Oof. loss. So I'm sure Aaron Rodgers would love a weapon like DJ Moore out there. Um, he saw Robbie Anderson get shipped off earlier this year. DJ Moore, he's he's been one of the one of the better, more talented receivers. He got paid, you know, he got paid a big deal this offseason for a reason. So um, I would love to see DJ Moore uh, up in Green Bay with A Rod. Who are you Who are you taking to win the South? You know what? I, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. When Tom Brady falls off and the Bucks fall off and all that, if it goes to shambles, I'm going to be wrong because I'm still going to be on that Tom Brady ship. So I'm going with the Bucks. That's still my safest bet. I, I don't trust I, I any of the other uh, quarterbacks in, in that division. You know, obviously you got uh, Andy Dalton out there, Mariota, and obviously P.J. Walker, but I don't trust those quarterbacks more than I trust Tom Brady and that offense to kind of figure it out. So I'm still going with the Bucks. So when they fall off, when it goes left, I will be wrong about Tom Brady. I'm letting you know right now. Uh, tweet that up and Adam Shaw. I didn't get to hear most of your answer there. I have, uh, sir, unfortunately, Sarushi, I have you in my ear and I couldn't hear Darius, but I'll go back and listen uh -oh. to that answer. Um, <laughs> if I can, uh, Brady in the yeah, box. Still I'm sorry. Now Brady I hear you, Darius. 
I just, <laughs> okay, breaking the bucks. That's all I need to know. That's where the smart money yeah, is. That's it. If you're making a bet over at FanDuel Sportsbook, which is where I will never be putting up a parlay again in my entire life because I have had enough PTSD over the past two weeks. I'm done. I, I texted Chris and my, my team over there at FanDuel and said, I've quit. I'm no longer it's doing that. Okay, the Dolphins, uh, <laughs> it's a wrap. They won 37 to 27, not a wrap on Miami season. They've got the, you know, it was against the Lions. Tyreek and Waddle had 100 plus receiving yards. You have been high on them. You have been my constant compass on this Dolphins team and this Dolphins duo. Uh, and if you take a look at it, it's amazing. They've racked up the most yards of any duo in the first eight of a season during the Super Bowl era. What's the ceiling for this pair of two that keeps getting him the ball? Man, yesterday uh, was the 13 year anniversary of one of the greatest rappers ever, Lil Wayne. He dropped a mixtape called No Ceilings. And I'm going right there with the Miami <laughs> Dolphins. It's no ceilings on this offense. Uh, Tua has obviously some great weapons, but you think about that speed with Tua and Waddle, I mean, with uh, Tyreek Hill and Waddle out there, like that's scary. That's very, very uncomfortable for a defense to have to line up and try to stop that game in the game out. Obviously, Tua missed some time uh, with his head injury, but he picked up right where he left off coming back. So it's, it's no, it's no silence for this team. Now, defensively, they got to pick it up. They got to start playing like the defense uh, we expect them to be this year. And as they get healthier, I think they'll uh, continue to pick up more of their slack on that defensive side. But there's no ceilings for this Miami Dolphins team at all. Do you do they remind you of any duo? Can you compare them to anything that you've seen in NFL history? No. Never seen anything like this uh, speed, talent-wise. Because they're both, obviously, straight line fast. So I would compare them to F cars, F1 cars more than I would compare them to some other receivers. So I compare them to Max Verstappen and, and Checo Perez and those Red Bull cars. But those guys are flying around. They're in and out of breaks. So they're not only fast, but they're also quick and can make uh, great catches. And Tua, Tua, man, he's accurate. And Mike McDaniel is kind of who he was cracked up to be, this offensive wizard, genius, whatever. Uh, he, he has Tua playing on a very, very high level. So, no, I can't really compare another duo uh, in the league or anyone that I face to these uh, these three guys right now with Tua, Hill, and Waddle. Mm, I want to ask you about Patrick Peterson. We opened the show talking about him. He obviously had a, a nice emotional revenge win up against the Cardinals. Uh, and his celebration after a pick six seemed to, the kids are saying, throw some shade <laughs> at Kyler during Call of, release, or Call of Duty release weekend, I believe. What do you make of this? You sound like Pat P. Like, how do you guys <laughs> act like you don't know what Call of Duty is? Call of Duty has been out in a round forever. Uh, but honestly, I think uh, I think Kyler kind of caught a stray here. He, he caught some shrapnel here. I think, obviously, Pat P was amped up for this game. He was ready to face his old team. He had a lot to get off his chest after the game as far as ownership and front office. So I think Kyler was more so of uh, just catching a stray innocent bystander. But, um, you know, Pat P had a lot to say in that celebration. Everybody was in on it. So, you know, they prepared for that moment yes. going into that game. And uh, I, unfortunately, had the Cardinals winning. But uh, the Vikings <laughs> are rolling right now. So, shout Let out to, to that defense and that team. It's amazing. They're 6-1 and one atop the NFC North. It's a beautiful thing to see. We'll see if they can keep it rolling. I, I have been paid American U.S. dollars <laughs> to host Call of Duty tournaments. OK, not one, not two. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't tell you a thing about it other than people call it COD, other than the fact that NFL players play it, and other than the fact that everyone just talks about kills. And that's all I hear the entire yeah. Otherwise, you, now, if you want to ask me about RC Pro-Am or Duck Hunt, you want to talk about that little dog and Duck Hunt and those flying saucers and that orange gun, I'm your girl. You aging yourself right now, okay? You aging yourself. Duck hunt? That's 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 way, way throwback. That was a classic though. That 007 and some old games. But Call of Duty, I, I can't play it. Everyone else has gotten way too good, but I used to play that one back in the day. And I think Juju Smith even spoke on it earlier about how that builds some team chemistry when you're able to come together and get some wins on the, yes. on the Call of Duty. So um, you know, hopefully, you know, Kyler Murray is kind of, you know, scaling back a little bit these days. Right. And you mentioned Patrick Peterson, and, and he is the OG there. And then he has this emotional win in this great game. And then he called out the Cardinals GM, Steve Kime, after the game. Take a listen to this. Where's Steve Kime? Still running for me. That's what I want to talk to. Man, the man face to face. Stop running. What do you want to tell him? I want to talk to him in his face. I don't want him to see this. I want to see him personal, personal, All personal. All I know is the next person. Yeah, I need to see him person to person. Stop running. Stop running! 
Sanchez on call me back. It's two years later. Wow. Ooh. Now, if nothing we wow. didn't know, right? The contract Spice. negotiation was a little bit messy. We know bad blood exists. Yeah. What were your thoughts on this? You know what? I, I, I get it. I understand it. People say a lot of times, you know, business is business. It's not personal. But a lot of times business is, is personal. And it's not like, you know, Pat P is just some slappy that came through and had a coffee for the Cardinals. This dude was a, a, a top five, top ten pick, came in and gave him eight Pro Bowl seasons out of the gate, one of the greatest players in that franchise's history. I think you owe that conversation to that man, um, business or not. Uh, as a front office member, even as an owner, when you're talking about a player of that stature. So I definitely get it from, from Pat P's standpoint. That's not something that's going to happen or I even expect to happen for every player up and down the roster. But for a player like Patrick Peterson, who's, you know, represented that organization uh, on and off the field in a great fashion, I think he's owed uh, that man-to-man -man conversation. That conversation can happen anywhere, too. That can happen on the field. Yeah. That can happen in the tunnel. Anywhere that conversation right. can happen. And um, on Steve Kahn's behalf, I think, I think it should. No, I'm here in New York. There's bad traffic. I hate it. I want you to take me on that freeway, jump on that open road, and take me down to shut down city. See, see, they got that traffic back in New York, man. But uh, let's go to shut down city. We got yep. Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Woo! Four picks in the last three games. I promise you, Marissa did not force me into putting him back on his list after the bye week. He's earned this. This entire secondary has. So Chauncey Gardner Johnson is in shut down city again. And then going back to that conversation we just had, the OG, one of the OGs in the league out there playing good football for the Minnesota Vikings, Patrick Peterson, getting revenge from his old team after getting a pick the week prior before the bye week down in his hometown, the nearest hometown in Miami. So shout out to Pat P, continue the mm -hmm. ball. And then the mayor of Shutdown City this week, K1 Williams, man. They open up the day across the pond he played a great game. I think targeted three times, one P PBU, game winning interception to get a big time win with the cast on at that. And I, this is near and dear to my heart because I had to play a season, a half a season with the cast on as well. So K1 Williams is the uh, the mayor this this week and a uh, great game, having wow. a great season. That was a big, big win for the Broncos too. The mayor of Shutdown City. Darius Butler, you did all that work while I'm just ruining my teeth eating these milk jugs. You're the best. I don't know how you do that and do TV at the same time. Those milk does, they'll be in my teeth for oh. a good 37 minutes. I don't know how you do that, Ken. I, I support local business. I can walk down to 30 Rock <laughs> and my doctor, Oren Ramanan, is sitting there ready for me to take my money. Darius Butler, we love you. We'll talk you to you go. soon. Catch him. I'm Pat McAfee. And the Man to Man podcast. I'm still waiting for... I want, I want to invite to that one. We'll talk to Darius Butler. We've got DK Metcalf. Now, oh, I just hit a light. Oh, boy. It's the Pezzy on the Pezzy. DK Metcalf one on one the good one. On the Pezzy, I just ice the Pezzy. DK Metcalf one on play. Touchdown, Seahawks. Our guest right now, one of the biggest, fastest, most explosive wide receivers in the NFL. He's also, I think, an aspiring actor. Can't wait to talk to him about there. An iconic fashion icon in the NFL. Uh, and he is joining us right now. Please welcome in Seattle Seahawks, all pro superstar DK Metcalf. Hi. What's up? How you doing? I'm so good. Now, I saw your Instagram story. Where's that dog that was in the car with you? That's why I wanted you to come on. I want to see that dog. <laughs> Uh, she's at the house right now. I'm I'm at the facility. <laughs> now you're at the facility. Got it. Did you do anything for Halloween? Did you dress up? Uh, no. Nah, we we had a little Halloween party up here. Um, you know, for for me and some of the players and the staff members. Uh, you know, in the building, it was it was a good turnout. What was the best costume you saw, and who wore it? It was actually one of the equipment managers. He's, he scared. He scared me when he uh, tapped me on my shoulder. I turned around and he was like the Grim Reaper. I couldn't see nothing but like a black cape, and <laughs> it was just it was it was a good outfit. 
you're like, Miles Garrett, is that you? That's, that is absolutely creepy. Right. Uh, and then to scary, 6'4", DK Metcalf. <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, it's all smiles for Seattle right now. I couldn't be happier and I couldn't be more apologetic that no one in the media, myself included, saw it coming or gave enough respect or love to this team. Another win, this time over the Giants, these, this also powerhouse team. Uh, and in the game, you did a little acting to help your team get into the end zone. Take me through this play. All right, so I had a, a slant route, and then I see Gino didn't throw the ball, so Dory kept following me. So I was like, let me see how far I can take it. So I was, uh, I ran and acted like uh, Gino threw me the ball, threw my hands up, and you know he he was chasing me and acted like he was trying to swat the ball down. So. I was like, dang, I really got him uh, on the on the fade route. But yeah, it was a it was a good little acting job. But that that running back uh, that we have in the backfield is is doing an amazing job right now, making people miss and uh, you know taking taking the uh, ball to the end zone. Did you plan on doing this, or had you ever thought about it? Or was this just improv on the spot? No, I used to do this in uh, high school all the time because teams used to double me. And so I just had to make the game fun. So I used to act like the, the quarterback was still throwing me the ball when he wasn't. And I would jump <laughs> and try to act like I was catching the ball. We love seeing it. And you know, there's acting that went into that in this game, plus a touchdown from you to help your squad. And I, I didn't even think you were going to play. You looked good out there. You were questionable. How are you feeling and how's the knee? Uh, my knee is great. Um, I got a little rest last week. Uh, did a lot of rehab, you know, at the facility and at the house. And uh, it was just like around the clock uh, rehab. But I'm um, just glad, you know, God blessed me to be able to go out there and play and have full trust in my knee and faith in myself. I love that. And, you know, the acting part of it all is I, I know you took acting classes. Is that where that came from? Because I know you even worked with Jerry Bruckheimer on a project. Yeah, uh, I actually had acting practice yesterday um, after uh, our meetings. But. Uh, yeah, I was in a film with uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, Owen Wilson, uh, uh, two off seasons ago, and uh, the movie released this off season. So it was just a great experience. It's just a great experience just to be on set, um, just see how a lot of actors and actresses, you know, take their job real serious. How you know we as uh, athletes take our job serious, uh, you know, during the week and during the season. So if you were to cast yourself in the perfect situation for DK Metcalf in a movie, a series, a superhero, villain, a comedy, who is DK Metcalf playing? Oh, I'm being myself a uh, superhero. Um, I will name my superhero. My pops calls me uh, chaotic. Um, and I'll just be saving, saving uh, a small town like Oxford, Mississippi or something like that. Hometown hero. Be I mean, it sounds like you've thought about this before, DK. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to get a screenplay. We got to get you an agent. I know some guys over at CAA. We can get you hooked up. We'll figure this out. Right. We'll make a movie in no time. Uh, but until but until then, I know you're focused on your job and what your role is on that team at five and three with the lead in the NFC West. And uh, I mentioned everybody counted you out. They really did for the season. So. What moment has been most satisfying to you this year? Um, just seeing everybody's, everybody's success and how we've just come together as like a, a brotherhood and not, not only as a team, uh, just seeing Geno's success, um, you know, our defensive success. Uh, we, we had the pleasure of getting Chinon Wilson from the Chargers. You know, he's just turned our defense around. Uh, Tyler's doing great. Uh, Kim Walker, an amazing running back, amazing rookie. These rookies that we have on defense and offense, it's just amazing to see, you know, everybody coming together and, you know, doing their part. And, you know, it's making a big difference. And, you know, we're pulling out wins, you know, left and right um, because everybody's just coming together. And we don't, like Tyler said, nobody cares who gets the credit. Um, you know, we just, we just go out there and just play for each other. A lot of people, I didn't like this, and I've, you know, a lot of people right away add Russell Wilson to that Tyler Lockett quote. What do you make of that? Because I don't think it's true. No, I mean, no, that was definitely not a shot at, at Russ. Um, it was just like, it, it just feels like a different vibe. Like we're a young team and, and that's just hungry. Uh, he was just more so speaking of everybody on the team in this moment and how we're just like unselfish with, uh, you know, how we play the game and with how we care for each other. Uh, Russ was definitely not that type of person to me or 
anybody, um, you know, that I, I seen him around. Uh, he was a great teammate to me. So it was Bobby Wagner and everybody that's, mm -hmm. you know, been through this organization since I've been here. So, no, that was definitely not a not a shot at anybody uh, and specifically. And it, yeah. It seemed like Tyler Lockett was talking about these young guys. Listen, Tariq Woolen blew my socks off when I had him on the show last week, getting to know him just a little bit, the first time I ever talked about him. And now he's got a fan for life. Like I could not be, you know, more uh, sort of like attracted to everything he's got going and the momentum and the mentality. And you're, you, you and Tyler Lockett, you guys are veterans now. You're setting the tone. You're talking to these guys. How impressed are you with this rookie class? Uh, very. Um, Kobe studies day in, day out. He's probably the first one to the facility and the last one to leave. Ken Walker uh, works his butt off every day at practice. Um, and when he gets to the game, he knows exactly who he is and what he has to do. Tariq Woolen, uh, I mean, you see him catching picks left and right. You know, nobody has completed a pass on him in, in a couple weeks uh, that I've seen. Um, and then, you know, the two tackles that we have in Abe and Charles that's holding, you know, the line down on the outside. Um, I mean, we just have like a, a hungry team. Um, you know, that's hungry just for, you know, a chance to play, a chance to win, mm -hmm. a chance to just not prove everybody else wrong, but, you know, just to prove ourselves right um, in every situation. So these rookies that we have, they, they motivate me every day in practice because, you know, they're trying to be great as well. They're trying to, you know, chase me, chase me down at practice or stop me at practice or stop Tyler. So, uh, I mean, it's just a, a fun sight to see. And then you have, speaking of proving people wrong, Geno Smith. There's so much to get into, but what was the moment that he won this locker room over? Um, I will say after the after the Saints game, I will say he told us that we got to be better as an offense, better as a team, play together. And ever since then, like everybody's just gravitated towards him. Uh, you know, he's a he's been a leader the past five weeks. Um, he's been leading us, you know, in offense, leading the team on the sideline. He's talking more. You can see how bad he wants to win, you know, during the game. Now he's taking off running, not running out of bounds, trying to lower his shoulder, get the first down. Uh, you can just see his competitive spirit uh, just come out on Sundays. And, you know, it's just a, a thing of beauty to see how many people, you know, counted him out and didn't give him a chance and wrote him off. And, you know, he's just kept his head down the whole time and just worked his butt off and, uh, you know, you, we, we, he's reaping the benefits of it now. Well, he said everyone wrote him off, but he didn't write back, though, which is one of my yeah, favorite lines, he, I think, yeah, in he NFL history. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's when he won. That's the moment he won me over. I said, OK, yeah. Gino, like, I see you. I see you right now. Uh, so that, that was a, it's a beautiful moment after that Saints game, and it's been working for you guys. And then, and then there was this moment, the moment of 2022, with the clench walk, <laughs> okay? We just have to get into it. This was the bowel movement that shook the NFL, DK. Uh, it's week four, you know, it's again, I think it's against the Lions, who cares, who knows? You're carted off the field. Are you, let's start here. Were you surprised this was such big news and that this went viral? Yes, I'm, I'm very surprised that me being carted off to go to the bathroom was big news. If anybody has played in Detroit, they know it is a long ass walk from the locker room to the field. <laughs> and I was not going to make that walk uh, by far. No, I was not going to make it. OK, so then here's the next question. What like what does Pete Carroll know? Do you, you obviously say I have to go to the bathroom? Is there a signal that you give to everyone? Like, is there a hot? It just you, you're just I'm out <laughs> it, and that's how it goes. All right. So this is the full story. <laughs> so this is the middle of the drive. And I come out for a play, and I told my my uh, receivers coach, I was like, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. He was like, you got to pee or do a number two. I said, I got to do a number two. And then it went away for like <laughs> 10 seconds. So I was like, all right, I'll go back in the game. And when I was back in the game, the feeling came back up. So we, we ended up scoring like two plays later. And so I run back to the sideline, and they had a cart ready for me. So the head trainer was like, you got to go to the bathroom. I was like, yeah. He was like, there's a cart down there. I'm like, bro, I'm not taking a cart. So then the equipment manager comes up and I was like, hey, it's a cart down there. I think you should go ahead and go. Pete wanted me to do it on the sideline. I'm like, no, I got too much respect for myself. I can't, I can't do it on the sideline. 
And so I hopped on the cart and went to the locker room. I was actually mic'd up that game too. So this is this is like very um So NFL Films has full pooping. Yeah, yeah, they got they got everything. I mean, you got now. Whenever NFL Films needs anything from you, DK, exactly. like you, I mean, that's I, just I like that. You know, yeah. they they got you. Exactly. So, uh, I'm, I'm Pete, did you, did right you now. say that Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll wanted you to, Pete Carroll wanted you to poop on the sideline? Yes, because it was like the first week of the season. Our special teams coach is uh, Larry Izzo, and he got a game ball for taking the shit on the sideline when he was with the Patriots. So Pete was like, if Larry can do it, then you can do it. And I'm like, I'm not like Larry. I don't want to be like Larry in that aspect. I'm not like Larry. I'm not like Larry. <laughs> I can't believe that. And then, uh, okay, well, then there we go. Now, now, I don't even know what to say about that. I would just say this. For us fans out there, we thought you were hurt. We thought something was wrong. So if you could give us some sort of signal, I don't know if it's like the bat signal, whatever. Next time anything like that happens, we just want to make sure that you are, you're good. You know what I'm saying? All right, man. I'll throw my thumbs up next time. Well, hopefully <laughs> no more cards are needed. DK, you're the best. We have a one, one last question for you. You've got the Cardinals this weekend. And last week we saw D-Hop get back from his time away and he balled out. Tell me the truth, because you're a human, you're also an alpha, you're, you know, you're a, a top wide receiver in this business. How does that affect you, seeing another wide receiver on another team perform well going into a matchup against them? Oh, I'd never, like, try to take any food off anybody's plate. I hope everybody, you know, succeeds. But it's going to be tough trying to get, you know, some yards on Tariq Woolen, uh, you know, now that he's back. So, you know, it's going to be a good matchup. I know I had to go against him, you know, all training camp and every day of practice. I um, mean, you know, I consider myself, you know, one of the best receivers in the league. So it's going to be it's going to be a tough matchup, but, uh, you know, may the best man win. Amazing. DK Metcalf, you are the best. Always keeping it honest, always keeping it real. Wishing you uh, so much success and tell Tariq Woolen that his biggest fan says hi. OK. All right. I will. Thank you. Thanks, DK. Good to see you as always. Big one between the Seattle Seahawks and those Cardinals this week. Up next, we've still got some fantasy to get to. I'm in New York City. We got to get to some dream trades ahead of that deadline at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, safe to say, DK Metcalf's not going anywhere for a long time. Everyday wins make your day so much better. That's why FanDuel Casino has a new daily free to play game reward machine. Oops, there it goes. Um, we got the chance to win. All you have to do is log in daily and spin for a free chance at rewards. FanDuel wants you to win. Play Reward Machine for a free chance at Everyday Wins only on FanDuel Casino. Hey, guys, my prompter's dead. <laughs> just <they're> throwing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just launching pan milk duds at people. All right, here's the deal. You want fantasy? You want people to pick up for paper wires? <laughs> Let's do it. These are actually probably pretty, pretty painful to get pelted with. Hamilton! Ah! Um, okay, Tyler Algier. Gary's That's who we like. Ow, ow, ow. Gary's not going to be happy with this. All right. He's available in 50% of the league, scored in back-to-back -back games, run heavy Falcons offense, love it. Rondale Moore. Is he like the so fetch? Do I keep trying to make him happen? No, I think he is happening now with uh, with DeAndre Hopkins All right. back doing his thing. It's 100 yard game last week, nine touches, season high, still out there in about 60%. How about Darnell Mooney? Hasn't been the fantasy darling a lot of people wanted to, but there's still value there. He's put up 50 plus yards in five straight weeks, solid option if the bye weeks are hitting you hard. And then at tight end, why do you just like this guy, Hammer? Milk duds everywhere. Uh, I just want to hit, I just wanna hit Greg, Mark Voto with one. Greg Dulcich. Ah! Oh, we caught it. <laughs> I love Greg Dulcich. Uh, rookie, big athletic tight end out of UCLA. Ru Russell, after the game, was singing his praises, just saying that there are freakish things about him. And I see it, too. I mean, he's a, he's a big athletic guy that can move, deep threat, hit him down the field. You saw he absolutely torched the Jaguars 87 yards as you're playing with milk duds. This is great. I'm a pitcher. Randy Johnson. Tyler Algier. Is that saying that right? Yeah. Algier? Okay. Algier. Uh, Rondale Moore, we got two wide receivers for you. And Greg Dulcich, baby, can he do it again? We were big fans of him last week. He is a top waiver wire ad this week. All right, this is the Up and Adam show. I mean, that really took a turn with our guy DK Metcalf. Um, but we're going to move it along to a break after this. The Bears traded Baroquan Smith. This is not breaking now. It broke yesterday, but we'll give you our trade dream scenario next. This is terrifying. <laughs> 
waiting for Schefter to finally announce some trades before 4 p.m. Like, yeah, like it's trade deadline day, a couple hours. Oh, I missed that studio. But here we are in this very interesting studio in New York City. Hamilton and I, uh, just a couple hours away from that trade deadline. So I'm going to give you a manifested ah, spirit fingers, woosa situation, uh, dream scenario for the trade deadline. And it is somebody who I've loved for a couple of years, DJ Moore, and he's been stuck in quarterback purgatory for far too long. But he's got time. He's 25 years old. He's in his fifth year in the league. He's already played with 10 different quarterbacks and has somehow still put up 2,000-yard seasons, which is pretty incredible. Uh, I'm ready for him to go somewhere. I'm sure he's ready to make a move. And I'm pretty sure Aaron Rodgers is also doing all sorts of woosai things trying to make this happen with Goody. Goody, don't be stubborn. Go get yourself a true number one and give your team a shot to make a run at this thing. Hamilton, dream scenario. I would love that, but uh, you, you, like you know that? what else would be? Oh, yeah. Good. Uh, you know what else would be pretty well, cool? Well, hold on, because they're still running the B-roll for this one, so let's let it ride. Okay, now we go. If Alvin Kamara mm -hmm. landed with the Buffalo Bills. Okay, well, get off this side. <laughs> Who's, is there a shepherd's hook? Voto can put him in a headlock and throw him down the stairs. I just think the versatility. Imagine him playing in the slot in that offense. Josh <laughs> Allen, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis. It'd be pretty cool to watch. You want the Buffalo Bills to win the Super Bowl. I actually don't mind if they win the Super Bowl, but I don't like a super team anyway, and I don't want Alvin. Alvin is all Saints. Yeah. Tomorrow's all Saints day, isn't it? To today? Oh. Maybe. Mark Voto's like, I'm yeah. actually the good Catholic here. It's today, <laughs> not tomorrow. Oops. Oh, yeah, it is November 1. Let's go, yeah. Come on. He's, he is November 1. He's the November 1 of the NFL. He's got to stay there. Yeah. That would be that would be pretty sick, actually. That offense would be We don't need two hurdlers on one team. It's greedy. Allen's already hurling over people at 250. We don't need Alvin Kamara also hurling over people. I just don't know how you stop that offense if he's there with all the versatility he brings, everything he can do. To, uh, can you just imagine AFC Championship but you game, want that, Chiefs to go offense, up there. that Chiefs offense with, well, I like McCaffrey to the Niners. That was the one I was hoping for. That is a so. nightmare yeah. dream scenario. Buffalo, <laughs> I love you. You don't need, you don't need him. You It'll didn't need McCaffrey. put you right McCaffrey. back into the underworld, the upside down. The upside down. Yeah. The, isn't the underworld like in Greek mythology? Isn't that correct? I'm just cultured and educated while you're watching Netflix and chilling. Just saying. I'm reading The Odyssey. So cultured with your milk duds and Swedish fish. Yep. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. DK Metcalf, <laughs> thanks. There's a yeah, there's a joke to be made here, but we're not doing it. Bye. <laughs>